Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode. So today I'm going to be talking about breastfeeding and specifically why it's good, promoting it, uh, giving you some information or, about um, the actual breast milk, what's in it, how it helps the baby, why it is essential, why the WHO is focusing it, why people are focusing on it, and why breast is best as the saying goes. So I'm here, your public health professional and specialist, JJ, and I'm going to be talking to you about breastfeeding today. So stick around until the end. Uh, I will give you some benefits for the mother as well. I'm going to be talking mainly about the, the baby or the infant at the start, and then at the end, I'll go into the mother as well. So just a, a short intro in my personal perspective, I've been teaching about breastfeeding and promoting breastfeeding for a long time. I've also had my own experience and my wife breastfed for three and a half years and it was exclusive breastfeeding for about six months, almost a year, because the things that are added between the six months and the year is not really sufficient. It's just little added on things, but it, it actually kept on going for more, more than three years. And my daughter is also more plant-based or whole food based and we've never had any problems. She's growing well, healthy, big and strong. Just a, a little personal experience. So promoting breastfeeding, the WHO promotes exclusive breastfeeding for six months and breastfeeding for at least two years. That is what they recommend. And they have many things to, to help with breastfeeding. They have codes, they have policies that can be implemented in hospitals. They can also be certified uh, breastfeeding friendly hospitals. So there are many initiatives to help and promote breastfeeding. So that is uh, very good because breastfeeding really benefits the child and I will tell you why. So between 24 weeks of gestation and two years of age, so that's quite a long period of time, the infant's or the baby's brain will acquire 90% of its size and capacity. So by two years of age, uh, an infant or a child will have about 90% of its brain size and capacity. So this is really, really important because those two years will affect the rest of your 70 or 80 or however long you live those years. So this initial two or three year period from conception to about two years is an extremely important and sensitive period of time because there's so such rapid development. To put it into perspective, professional athletes consume about 100 kilocalories per kilogram per day to maintain <clears throat> peak performance. Infants will consume 120 to 130 kilocalories per kilogram per day, and even more vitamins and minerals and um, omegas and all of these things that go with it, the micronutrients. So this is essential for their development, for their growth, for health, for acquiring the organ size and capacity and function. So to mature all of their bodily functions. So it's interesting that by two years, the child has 90% of its brain size and capacity. So that is then a lot of it is due to the breast milk and that is why breast milk is essential. So why breast milk? So first of all, breast milk contains antibodies. So antibodies from the mother, from the father as well which then go to the baby. And this infant will then get the benefit of basically the mother's disease record. <laughs> All of that will be passed to the child. <clears throat> and the child will, the child's immune system will then recognize all of these um, dating back the whole mother's life. And the father has some input there as well, because there's DNA from the father as well. So the father and the mother's disease record is then passed on to the child and the child will then have more protection from all of these diseases that the parents were exposed to. So that is a wonderful thing about breast milk. So it's especially for what for the mother and it's continuous for the mother. So if the child gets sick, the mother, if the mother is breastfeeding, that will 
help the child then get better quickly, more quickly. So antibodies in breast milk, so it boosts, it, it helps maintain a healthy immune system and adds in memory cells into your immune system. So it decreases your obesity risk as well. So it, it decreases the obesity risk as an infant and going on into adulthood. So it's not just a temporary at that moment benefit, but it's a, a benefit throughout life. Children who are breastfed have a much lower obesity risk. I believe it's something about 30%. So it's the balanced fat, protein, carbohydrates, minerals, vitamins, all of these packaged together in the breast milk. And the breast milk is specific for that child and it changes with each feed. It changes throughout the day, morning, evening. It's different. Hot days, cold days, humid days, dry days, rainy days. It's different. Breast milk is never the same. Breast milk will always be different. So if you test it now, it will be have a different content if you test it an hour, two hours, three hours later. There's a difference. So it's specific for that child. So you need that connection with the child, the mother and the child, to get the, that adaptation in the breast milk because it's specific for that child. So it's also been found to increase the child's IQ. So IQ, EQ, the performance IQ, learning, <clears throat> memory, these are all things that are beneficial and that you get from breastfeeding because breast milk contains a lot of the human milk oligosaccharides which are beneficial for memory and learning, a lot of the omegas, DHA, brain health, building the myelin sheaths and the neurons and letting them connect and forming connections and really making a lot of those connections so that you're, you have a lot of capacity for memory and learning. So there are also a lot of bioactive com compounds, antimicrobials, growth factors, there's a lot of iodine, iodine levels are high, so that helps to balance out the hormones. It's good for your thyroid health and your thyroid also secretes the hormones for growth. So then growth will be stimulated and you will have adequate growth when there's adequate iodine. And that comes from breast milk. So then you also have the RNAs, the mother's RNAs that are passed down into the child, which will help immunity, build up immunity, build the immune system and help the immune system fight off disease better and balance out your whole body. It's also high in choline, uh, which a choline deficiency can lead to cognitive and memory delays, problems and deficits. Then there's also a lot of folate, calcium, zinc and iron, but the iron levels are balanced. There's generally a lower amount of iron in breast milk than in formula because iron can be dangerous because iron is something that bacteria thrive on. If you have too much iron, bacteria will just go and you can get sick. Iron is not given in ICU and in the diseased population because of its ability or it's, it's a food for bacteria. Bacteria thrive on iron. So you don't give supplemental iron to someone who is sick because that will can make it worse. It can cause just the disease to, to mushroom. So it has a balanced iron content. Then I mentioned the iodine levels as well. Iodine is essential for your thyroid and your thyroid is what controls your growth hormone. And that is essential for children because they are still growing and growing rapidly. Then there's also sialic acid, which is essential for your prefrontal cortex, where you are making decisions, as well as your hippocampus, where automatic deci decisions are being made. So breathing, your heart rate, your secretions, your organ functions, these are all automatic, come from your hippocampus, and then your prefrontal cortex, where you are making decisions. That is a conscious thing that you are doing, and that is also where you need sialic acid to help develop this ability and to have a good decision making capacity because that is really important because we make decisions every second of the day and we need to make good decisions then breast milk is also high in vitamin b6 b12 c and d which is essential for your myelin and neuronal formation so basically your brain your brain capacity 
your memory capacity, your decision-making capacity. So your brain is essential. Your brain is controlling your body. Your body does not control your brain. Your brain controls your body. So take control of your body by using your brain and your prefrontal cortex. And this comes as a child. It starts developing, starts happening as a child. And it starts with good nutrition, good breast milk. So breast milk is essential for your brain development, for bodily development, for growth. And the benefits last your whole life. And breastfeeding for at least two years is extremely beneficial because at this two year stage, a lot of the development has happened. The baby has tripled in, in weight, doubled in height. 90% of the brain size has been reached. So it's really essential to keep on for two years. Um, if you cannot, for various reasons, don't feel bad. You manage with what you, the situation that you have. If you are able to, please do. If you are not able to, try then to mitigate by doing everything you can to then improve the nutrition that the child is getting if they have not been breastfed or if you have already stopped or if you didn't. Don't worry too much about it. You can start today and you can start doing something about your health every single day. So for the mother, the mother also has a lot of benefits. It's good for the mother's mental health, good for the mother's recovery. It helps to keep the weight off for mothers as well. Um, it helps with behavioral resilience in the mother and the child. It increases the bond between the mother and the child. It helps decrease pain for the mother, especially it increases sleep. It's better sleep for everyone, L less sick days and less sick time when the child or the mother is sick and lower emotional problems later in life for the child. So all of this just because of breastfeeding. So six months is really the minimum, exclusive breastfeeding for six months and then at try for two years, so breastfeeding for two years while adding supplemental foods. So it's not all the time when you're feeding so exclusive breastfeeding for six months will be day and night. Then it will start the weaning process. It will become less, 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 less. So by two years, it might just be a night time or a wake up. So go to sleep, wake up one or two in the night. So it will really decrease. It will go from like eight, nine times a day to two or three or even one. So the, it will really become much less the breastfeeding. It won't continue at the amount that it was as a baby, as eight or nine times a day, it will start decreasing by about six months. The frequency of feeds will decrease. And then it might just be when the child gets sick or just when it get, the child gets hurt or so just to fall asleep or just to wake up. So it, it really dep depends on the situation. With my daughter, it really went to just a nighttime feed just to fall asleep when she was sick and then sometimes in the morning just to wake up and then it completely stopped. So it depends on the, the situation, but try for, for, for two years, it really does get less and it doesn't stay as frequent as at the beginning. And there's the benefit for the mother and for the child and it can really impact the rest of that child's life. So I hope this has been informative, it has helped you, it's given you some, some ideas and some insight, and I hope that it has been helpful. As always, stay healthy and to God be the glory.